an American death metal band. He went for it at once. The idea behind playing this type of music was to pump up your adrenaline, to cross boundaries and go beyond the limit. For ferocity, crossing boundaries increasingly meant experimenting with the occult. Fabio was very attracted to the idea of Satanism, which metal music was about. He was fascinated by these things. Some of Fabio's behavior began to give his parents cause for concern. My wife happened to be in the bathroom when Fabio was taking a shower and she noticed some marks on his shoulder. They were clearly left by human teeth and there were also cigarette burns on his arm. Even I don't know what suddenly started to happen, the mania for self-harm. We cut ourselves, we smashed things against ourselves. Maybe it was a show of strength between him and me, I don't know. With hindsight, we know that what he told us wasn't true. He said there'd been a fight and we completely believed him at the time. On Saturday the 17th of January 1998, Fabio went to the midnight pub as usual. He was 16 years old and for the first time he phoned home saying he wanted to stay out for the night with a girl he knew called Chiara Marino. His father was having none of it. I said, get on the underground the same time as usual and come home, no messing around. Okay, Dad, I understand. Worried by the tone of Fabio's voice, Michele drove into Milan to fetch his son. Of course, when I got there, they weren't there. Someone said, yes, he was here with Chiara. They went to make a phone call. They're not back yet. When Fabio and Chiara failed to come home the next morning, their parents immediately called the police. Over the following days, they contacted everyone who knew them. He said, do you know where Fabio is? I said, no, we're expecting him at rehearsals. I thought, he's struck lucky. He's gone off to spend a couple of nights with this Chiara. I certainly didn't imagine anything sinister. The police said that Fabio and Chiara had probably run off together. But to Fabio's family, this made no sense. He was happy at home and doing well at school. So as the days turned into weeks with no sign of his son, Michele began to investigate Fabio's other life, the world of heavy metal. Comincio a prendere in mano queste cassette, comincio a farmele tradurre da mia figlia. Queste qui, per esempio, è una copertina dei, di un CD dei Cannibal Corps, uno vile, ecco, il titolo. E così insomma, vengono fuori delle cose, i testi scritti sulle copertine sono allucinanti. Vi parla di, di squartamenti, anche quest'altro, quest'altro per, per esempio, che cos'è questo qui? Dismember addirittura, eh, che qui per l'appunto si vede un corpo umano squartato. Allora, per esempio quest'altro, quest'altro qui, sono i, i decide, letteralmente genocidio degli dei. Ecco, questo per esempio era uno dei complessi di cui Fabio apprezzava di più. Dopo di questo qui ci abbiamo un ultimo che è uno dei più estremi, riconosciuti e dichiarati, il titolo Hell Awaits, con la famosa stella a cinque punti che poi sono gli Slayer. Michele began a journey of discovery that was to take him to heavy metal concerts across Europe. I went to see them all, from the very small groups whose names I found among Fabio's papers to the larger, more famous groups. 
come gruppi anche più famosi, per esempio. Per esempio, I went to see Slayer. Concerti degli Slayer. Uh, I saw Mayhem and Pantera. Uh, dei Pantera. I went to Iron Maiden. Mayhem. Side. The Side. I spoke to Glenn Benton with the help of a young man who interpreted for me. I explained what I was doing and who I was looking for, that my son was a great fan of his and so on. I think I met the father backstage at one of the shows. But his kid was missing or something like that. I think I remember telling him that I hope he comes back and he's probably just off with his buddies. I don't think he spoke a lick of English and there was somebody interpreting for him. When I signed the magazine I had in my hand, which had his photograph in it, he said to me, when Fabio returns home, you can show him this. As well as talking to the performers, Michele handed out leaflets and put pictures of Fabio in metal magazines. Several times, there were reported sightings. I remember the episode somewhere near Bergamo, I think, when he went out convinced that it was Fabio. They'd made these phone calls and I had prepared signs saying welcome home and I was all happy. And I remember the disappointment when he called me and told me that it wasn't Fabio. As his search went on, Michele began to learn more about the people his son had been hanging around with. When I was sort of poking around, rummaging around in his rucksack, among his books and things, I found lots of these people's names, so I made a note of some of them. Certain names kept cropping up as being people he saw a lot of. Leoni. Guerrieri. Volpe. Fabio spent all his free time with these people and I became more and more convinced that they had to know something at least. So Michele began to dig a little deeper. He began to talk to other people in the Milan metal scene. It emerged that this group was bound together by more than just music. They were involved with the occult. The parents of Chiara Marino, the girl who had disappeared with Fabio, discovered satanic texts and icons in their daughter's room. Slowly, Michele built up a dossier of information. Names, addresses and photographs of Fabio's friends. Over the next six years, he became convinced that his son's disappearance was connected to a satanic sect. On the 25th of January 2004, police were called to a chalet in a village outside Milan. We started with the interior of the chalet. The lights were still on. The table was still laid with two plates untouched and three glasses of sparkling wine half drunk. Something odd had happened here. In the greenhouse, we saw hands jutting out of the earth, some tufts of hair. The police had discovered the half-buried body of a local girl called Mariangela Pezzotta. An autopsy revealed she had been shot, then buried while still alive. Details of the murder made the local news. I heard the news that a girl from Soma Lombardo had been murdered. It wasn't so much the news item itself as the name, Andrea Volpe. The same evening we received a phone call from a certain Michele Tolles. Somebody we'd never heard of. I said, I haven't come here to give you a hand with the problems you're facing. I'm here to add to your problems. Michele handed his dossier on Fabio's friends, including Volpe, to the police. Working on this information, they mounted a surveillance operation, tapping many of their phones. And the police began to interrogate Volpe about Satanism, and about the disappearance of Fabio and Chiara. 
Quindi a Volpe Andrea facciamo capire. We put pressure on Volpe, suggesting to him that we knew about other crimes he'd committed. E insomma, a distanza di tempo, ci racconta che effettivamente. It took some time, but he told us that we were basically right. Cioè che i due ragazzi erano stati uccisi durante il contesto di un rito satanico. The two kids had been killed during a satanic ritual.